You really don't understand what people are fighting beneath that exterior because it's really easy for us to put on a pretty face. When I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, I was 12 years old. We went to the doctor, um, they pricked my finger and they told me my blood sugar was 396 and I had no idea what that meant. I asked the nurse, I said, is that good, is that bad? And she was like, well, let me go get the doctor and he'll tell you. And so he came back and he said, so it's looking like you have what we call type 1 diabetes. So um, it was a huge lifestyle change. I have to manage my blood sugars 24-7, so that is like 3 a.m., 3 p.m., no matter what happens. Basically every day is a challenge. I went through a pretty hard time in high school just accepting who I was as a woman and then accepting who I was as a diabetic. My number one influence was my art teacher because she recognized um, my learning style and kind of understood me on a different level that other teachers didn't. Um, I, felt, I felt safe, I felt accepted in the art classroom. When I decided to become an art teacher, that's something that is very important to me when I have my own classroom in like a year. You know, I want it to be that place where people feel comfortable to be themselves and to create um, individually and also collectively. When I graduated high school, I kind of took this turn, took this shift and made this attitude change. I said, you know, this is an opportunity for me to educate these people. That's why I co-founded um, the chapter of the College Diabetes Network because another diabetic on campus approached me via Facebook. She messaged me and she was like, hi, my name's Hannah. I'm on the UNK campus. I'm also a type one diabetic. I found this organization, this national organization called the College Diabetes Network. And I was wondering if you'd be interested in starting a chapter at UNK. So naturally I was like, heck yes, I think that's awesome. Becoming independent in college is hard for people in general without their parents, let alone um, having that kind of safety net of those people who understand mood swings and days where you just don't want to do diabetes. We wanted to start CDN to be a support group for different diabetics on campus so that that transition wouldn't be as hard. I am a firm believer in type one community because you can't go through it alone. We are insulin dependent. Um, there's no way to reverse it. There's no cure yet. Diabetes is a part of my life, but it's not the number one part of my life. Like I always like to say, um, type one diabetes doesn't have me. I, you know, I have diabetes. You know, you really don't understand what people are fighting beneath that exterior because it's really easy for us to put on a pretty face, you know, on Instagram, on Facebook, whatever, and say like, my life is so great, but truly what's going on underneath. Everybody has their own story, everybody has their own thing going on, whether that is, you know, like physical or emotional. And so I think just asking deeper questions, taking the time to talk to people and be a positive influence in their life is something that I try to be, whether that's at school, work, or um, in the classroom.